Welcome back to MSNBC Live. I'm Carlos Watson. So do liberals need to grow a spine in the fight over health care? In fact, critics are saying the Democrats' seemingly endless quest for a bipartisan bill is actually watering down any real effort at reform. With me now to talk about this, Ari Melbert, Democratic strategist and correspondent for The Nation. Also joined today in Washington by Ryan Ellis. He's the tax policy director for Americans for Tax Reform. And joined again by Mort Zuckerman, who's my co-host today. Uh, Ari, so I'll start with you. Uh, Bill Maher made me laugh this weekend when he said that he wanted to prescribe a new medicine for Democrats called Grow a Set. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, when you hear the number two Democrat in the Senate, Dick Durbin, say that maybe public option, um, you, may, you may have to forego. Uh, when you see Democrats seeming to back away um, in some of these town halls and seem to whine, as some, as some have critiqued them as doing, what do you say to that? Yeah, I think there's two problems that are running into each other. One, nobody likes wavering. I don't care what the issue is. Two, this is a complicated issue. This is not binary. And so the public option is one of the things we've heard from progressives and healthcare advocates that creates competition and would be good. And so when you see them wavering there on a story that's already complicated, they're not giving people back home a clear guidance on why this is so important. So wavering is always bad, and then they're taking something that's complicated and they're letting it get more complicated. Because if it doesn't have the public option, is it really urgent and important? Then you get the people at the town halls pushing back, and you lose the momentum. Ryan Ellis, how do you think about this? I know you're on the other side of the aisle on the conservative in the conservative family, but but if you were advising uh, progressives, what would you say to them? Would you say that they need to uh, uh, pass on bipartisanship for the moment? Do they need to get more aggressive, or in the end, for all of the drama, is President Barack Obama likely to get a big victory? And in the end, the unemployment numbers will be the story. Well, the first thing I would advise them to do is to not try to shut this down the country's throat. Um, there was a push to try to get this done by the August recess. Uh, at one point, President Obama wanted a bill out of both chambers by the August recess. Look, this is a huge, huge bill. It costs over a trillion dollars on the House side. There's over $700 billion over 10 years in tax increases. The Congressional Budget Office has said that this increases the debt by hundreds of billions of dollars. At the very least, if you're, if you're a liberal, if you're an honest liberal on the left, and you think this is a good idea, you've got to slow down down, you've got to explain this because people are very frightened right now. Let me ask you, just as a matter of political strategy, would it not have served uh, the, the liberals best if uh, they had, I don't know if that's my phone or somebody else's phone, I don't think it's mine. We have a little noise drama there. Um, Ari, let me go to you a little bit on, on this question of where do the Democrats go from here. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an opportunity for them to use a parliamentary technique and ultimately pass uh, health care with 51 votes instead of looking to get that veto-proof 60. Is, uh, Mort, do you want to jump yeah, in on this? There are some very real technicalities in that 51 vote uh, approval that make it very difficult to get through the kind of programs that are implicit in this health care reform bill. That's the real problem in that. Yeah, well, I, I do think that part of it is just having the president sit down with the leaders, uh, especially in the Senate, where we're seeing more problems for the Democratic approach, and drawing lines. They have avoided drawing lines, and that's complicated the story, and let the town hall become the story. You're almost proposing a Ronald Reagan approach. Yeah. Ronald Reagan and, and, and Rudy Giuliani and I have talked about this a lot. Even if he ultimately compromised, was uniquely talented at drawing a hard line, um, whether it be on taxes or defense spending or what have you, and ultimately uh, striking a deal in part because he'd drawn and one point on money, this stuff does come back to money. We've seen over 50 million already spent in advertising alone. When you hand it over to Congress, you give the special interest more control. So the I, president's got to. I hate to do this, guys, but we've got to leave it there and, uh, and take it to a break. Thank you, though. Ryan Ellis in D.C., thank you for joining us again. Very much appreciate it.